Hey everybody, good morning. It's First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Banovich. Good news and bad news today for some folks. Good news, the severe weather risk has gone down for a big chunk of the area, really the entire area, honestly. In a few areas, it's, I will tell you, it's probably not zero, but it's really low. But areas south and east, that risk still persists. And I'll kind of talk about that. So I'll lead initially here with the updated severe weather outlook. Came out at two o'clock in the morning. If you watch my midnight update, we kind of knew that we're going to see some changes with this. And sure enough, the areas to the north have been reduced to a low and medium risk. And the greater risk has really been shoved off to the south and east. Now, this is uh, the medium risk is always something to keep an eye on. But the lower risk, typically, I would say we're OK. The areas that I, I feel more confident that probably won't see much of anything is probably right in here. Mountains and foothills. Um, once you get east and southeast of I-85, which runs right here, I really think all this area here is the area we got to watch. But even up in here. We're going to keep a close eye, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but I'm going to show you the overall setup. So if you've been outside this morning, you know it's still pretty cool out there. The warm front has not moved north yet. The problem is it still has plenty of time to move north, and even though you see this main line of storms here, the main cold front is still back here. So this is going to give time for storms to redevelop as they push northeast and the warm front comes uh, north. I'm going to turn on the temperatures here real quickly just to show you that pocket of cold air. If this stays in place, this would help us. It would save us from severe weather completely. But what I anticipate will happen is this warm front will come north to some degree. How far north? Who knows? Maybe I-40. So that's why areas south and east have the best chance to see that recovery um, and get into that warm, humid air as that pushes to the east. But you can see this morning, I mean, I'll put the watches on. We still have uh, tornado watches down in Georgia and several tornado warnings this morning. And while these are tracking this direction more so than this direction. So this is what we got to watch going into the afternoon. I will say, too, I think this is going to be slightly slower because it's pivoting back into the main low, which is still back here over near St. Louis because they're kind of moving this direction. Uh, they're getting here a lot slower um, than you would think. So let me show you the updated um, tornado probabilities as well. This will kind of give you a good idea on where those stand as we look towards today. So here's a change in the tornado probabilities, down to 5% for most of the area, but 10% still holding on for these areas south and east of Charlotte, then 15% um, out towards the coast. Here's the timing. I kind of updated this slightly because of what I'm expecting to happen today. I really think right around midday to mid-afternoon, so maybe a couple hours slower than even last night, and I'll explain why that is in a minute. Um, the probabilities overall still got a tornado threat, but it's in the medium risk, and the wind threat has come down to the medium risk as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about as far as why this is slowing down. I'm going to do you a, a quick future cast here. This is actually a grab um, at 7 a.m. this morning, but let me show you this closer up. We'll actually use this map to kind of show you how this unfolds. So we'll start our future cast at about 10 o'clock in the morning. You can see this line developing to the southwest. It looks a little aggressive here, but you get an idea as it moves into the middle of the day. The first batch is kind of get eaten up by the wedge. Remember that cold air is going to be here, but the warm front's going to be moving to the north. So basically, it's a race between the cold front, which is right here, and the warm air, which is trying to surge up ahead of it. So this is why the timing here is really crucial. There's going to be a very narrow window or corridor of time um, where these two were lined up. So this is right around noon. You can see the storms entering the mountains and foothills, likely not strong or severe. They're scattered here, which is not always a good thing um, because they could become more isolated, independent, and actually feed off the environment a little better. You see the storms down in South Carolina, but watch what happens right here around 2 to 3. We get this little band of, of storms moving across Interstate 77. We've got a little cluster there, one there, one up here, and bigger ones down here. So anywhere in here this early afternoon and remember this is the peak heating of the day as well so this is actually would be more favorable especially if that warm front drifts north but you can see through the afternoon that little line pushes off to the east so i think that's the little cluster we got to watch really after lunchtime into mid-afternoon kind of pushing off to the east and in that same vein i want to show you um, the STP values with this, which are called significant uh, tornado parameters here in a minute. But I'm going to back this up. And what I'm going to do is show you that instability, um, which is basically the cape, we call it. I'm going to plot this on here real quickly as I'm, I'm talking to you, just to show you how this evolves today. This is the fuel for storm. So you see it kind of surging up. And let me back this up. So you can see, I, I can show you exactly where the warm front is right there. Here's the cold front. 
This is the, the, the fuel for storms. Watch what happens as we go to about one or two this afternoon. I'm going to stop it right there. See how it surges up? So look at the time up here. One, two o'clock this afternoon to about three o'clock right there to four o'clock. So there's a, there is a very narrow corridor. That stuff shoots up here just ahead of that front and gives us the potential um, to see those storms. So let me show you the STP values. I, I show this often, which is the significant tornado parameter, just to show you um, how this has changed. And again, these are the ingredients for tornadic storms. Obviously, nothing this morning, nothing, 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 nothing. And then same time right here, this is around noon. This is one o'clock, uh, excuse me, this is two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. So you see that surge coming up right there in mid-afternoon. So it's a, it's, it's going to be quick. It's going to come in all at once. It could go from 50s and 60s up to the 70s briefly. And those helicity tracks, which are basically rotating storms, um, not a ton of these, which is good, but there are a couple that pop up. You can see right here, right across the Piedmont, as that batch moves through, there's one or two more down here. Overall, there's very few of them. That's a good sign overall um, and something I would be very happy with if it stays that way. But again, there's the, there's that moisture or that instability coming in um, this afternoon. So we'll keep an eye on it. The good news, the overall threat, there's no doubt about it, has gone down. Um, there's a look at the system where it is now in comparison to us. This line right here is in Georgia taking its sweet time to get up here. So still a risk for storms today, but the good news is the risk has gone down tremendously until later this afternoon and shifted to the east. Stay weather aware. Make sure you stay have alerts. Got a little more time to prepare for this and keep an eye on the skies. We go into the afternoon.